So in this video, I'm going to show you the best V-Ray settings. So what you do is go into settings, your V-Ray settings, hit F10 if you have to, and then switch to the V-Ray, and there you go, you're done. And I'm not trying to make a joke out of this. The reason I say this is because V-Ray themselves, their default settings are good. They've set it up in such a way that you will get good results. If I was to hit just render here, you have good results. There's a lot of videos out there saying you should go in here into GI, increase this, you can increase subdiv. These default settings have been set by Chaos themselves and you can go to their documents and see that they say they've gone through thousands of uh, scenes and files and they've pretty much said these are the settings which will get you the right results. You can obviously tweak more if you have a particular scene that you find you're not getting the correct results. But there's too many videos out there saying you need to dive into all these settings and change this and change this. You don't. If you have a scene, you can just go to the default settings and hit render. So if you just wanted that, you've got it. You just hit render and you're fine. Now, the problem is you, have, you ask yourself a question. You have either time or quality. So if you have unlimited time, that means you don't have a time budget. It means the quality can be really good. But if you, if you have limited time, that means the quality has to suffer a bit because you only have a certain amount of time. Makes sense. So there are certain things you can change if you're limited by that time frame. And I'm going to show you now in the longer section of this video. So there's two types of image samplers and two types of rendering, I would just say. There's progressive here and then there's bucket. Progressive is handy for seeing real time changes. So if I was to hit render now, you can see that we actually see live feedback. And if I was to go into say the lights here and I was to change something, light here, select this, and I'm going to bring the intensity up to 10, something very strong. You're going to see straight away we see feedback. Now it's very noisy now, but it's slowly build a light catch and it will start rendering. This is for quick feedback when you're rendering. So if I switch that back now to one, I'll show you what bucket is. Now I've set it to bucket, and I'm going to hit render. It's going to do the same thing that with the progressive where it's going to build a light catch, but the only difference is now it's going to render it in buckets and you're going to see these buckets pop up now in a second. So you can see these buckets here and each one is a core on your CPU and it will slowly go through and render the entire scene. It's a bit more efficient and more likely safer, but it's also easier to do on multiple computers if that's something you're doing on a server. So your final render where you're happy with stuff after doing progressive, you usually switch to bucket and then hit render. So battling time and quality. So if, like I said earlier, if you find that this is taking too long on these default settings, then you can adjust some things. So focusing on the bucket, mode here with type bucket we have a few options down below which can control the quality of our render and the time like i said earlier time versus quality so the min subdivs i usually leave at one you can put it to two if it's very thin geometry and then these max sub subdivs i usually go in increments of say power of two so what i mean is if i do two and if the quality isn't good i increase this to four and then if that's not good enough i increase it to eight and on and on until I'm happy with the result. Now the balancing act you have to do is between the max subdivs and the noise. So one of these is going to be achieved first. So let me show you in the renders I've done earlier, which are in Photoshop now. So here's some renders I did earlier. And what I have here is I have a render set to subdivision four. To my, if I go back to V-Ray, you can see in V-Ray, I would have set this to four and everything else as default. So here are some renders I did earlier. And in this render, I set the subdivisions to four, but everything else on default. And you can see if I zoom in here, there's quite a bit of noise. And that's be expected because it's such a low subdivision. Um, and if I put this other layer on, it might make much sense. But basically, this is my sample rate. Anything you see in red is pretty much something that didn't hit the noise level but it did hit the subdivision level. So once it hits subdivision level four, that bucket will move on. But if I go down now to eight, you can see it's a lot smoother. If I flick between four and eight, you can see that quality increase. Um, you can especially see it, I think, on the roof up here. So there's four, a lot of noise, eight a bit less. And then we can even go next one, which is 16, and you see it gets even better quality. So the more we increase. But let's look at the difference between this four subdivisions and this 16 one. So if I flick this off, you can see that the blue means it achieved the quality asked of it in both noise and subdivision. The red, like I said, means it, it didn't hit the 
noise threshold, but it hit the subdivisions. And green means it got to the noise level, but didn't hit the minimum subdivision. So this is the quality you have to find and fight. Most, you want it mostly blue, and that'll be meaning you're looking good. So to clarify that a bit more, I set the noise to one. So if I switch this off, you can see it's completely blue. And that's because it hit the noise level, but it didn't hit the subdivision levels because I set that to 10,000, an extremely high number. I basically said, just worry about the noise and follow through with that. Then I did subdivision one, the lowest subdivision, and you can see it's completely red. It's because it hit that subdivision, but the noise level was nowhere near achieved. So you might be asking yourself, okay, why are we going through all these settings if you said at the very beginning that we don't need to look at this, we can just hit the default settings. Well, I just want to remind it's time versus quality. So I want to show you one thing, which is this is subdivision four and it's quite noisy. And this is 16. However, this render the subdivision four took four minutes and 40 seconds. Okay. The subdivision 16, which looks like this a lot better, took about an hour, it took about 57 minutes. So it really matters how much time you have. If you have to crunch this out and get it out straight away, you're going to have to do a lower subdivision. However, there's even better solutions. You could do that for and still get great results. And that's using the denoiser. So down here, I have a folder called denoiser. Switch it on. And here's the subdivision four. Here's the exact same one, but with a denoiser added on top. So if I flick this off, you can see it looks great. So on and off, these are the exact same. This took four minutes as well, this render, but I just added on a denoiser. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what's the difference between 16, the one that takes an hour long, and the one that takes four minutes? Well, some details will be lost with the denoiser. That's just gonna happen, it doesn't have enough detail. So to see that visibly, if I zoom into this portrait, and I switch this on and off, you can see that details lost, because it's kind of just smoothed those details. So that's where you might lose a detail. But for a four minute render um, and getting this getting this quality, it's well worth it to always put a denoiser on top because it's non-destructive, you'll get both layers. But that's a really good way to do it. So you could put a low value and low noise and then put a denoiser on top and you get great results. One other setting you might want to look at is this min shading rate. And this is kind of like be a universal thing where if you push this up, it's gonna push up all the materials. So that's gonna slow down your render, of course. And it's just gonna, you could do it the max of this here as well. But in order to optimize your scene, you could crank this up, but again, it's that time and quality thing. Instead of cranking this up all a, a good bit, you can go into an object you feel doesn't have enough quality, right click it and go to VRA properties, and then you can change it in here. And you can increase these, increase the settings and make that individual object better for your render instead of having because you might have some things that are rendered perfectly and if you increase this you're bogging down your scene where you don't need to you're making things higher quality and they've already hit their max quality anyway so if you're wondering the best way if you're like well my render looks really poor what can i do to make it look better it's resolution so it's actually not in the vray tab here at all yes you can change these but if your resolution here is too low it doesn't matter what you do and if you want an example this video Go to the settings and change it to 720p. See the quality, then change the settings to 1080p and see the difference. And that's the same compression. All it is is increasing the resolution. So if you want a better image and you want a quick one, you just increase this resolution. Of course, increasing this will also increase the render time because it has more pixels. But that's one quick thing. Want better quality? Increase the resolution. So to summarize, the default settings for V-Ray should be good enough for 90% of your work. But if you find you're not getting results or it's taking too long or you don't have the time, you can change some of these settings. And the ones I suggest you change are the min subdivs, the max subdivs, and the noise. Now it's a fight between these two, which one you want to fight. Uh, most of the time I keep the subdivs high and you can use a denoiser and you can keep the noise threshold at 0 0.01. You can put it down to 0 0.05 but I wouldn't go any lower than that. The other way to like make your scene better, like I said earlier, is to go into your V-Ray properties and change the subdivs here on the objects you feel aren't getting enough detail. You can also, instead of increasing your GI and the subdivs here, which will do the global one, so because you, you could have some lights that are looking good, but you might have some lights that don't. So you can come into your lights 
and change the subdivs individually for each light. So it might be the only one light you want to affect. That way your scenes will render faster and it will look better. So overall, time and quality affect the lights themselves, affect the objects themselves, and then just play with the noise and subdivs and always add a denoiser. And nine times out of 10, if not more, you're gonna be happy with the results you get. Don't feel like you need to overcomplicate things. V-Ray themselves, Chaos, have set this up that it's almost click and go. So I wish you luck. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. And if you'd like to see anything else like this, let me know. Mm -hmm.